While we're on this journey, my greatest fear is that Jeff, my partner, gets dementia. And then, then we're in a muddle. I have frontotemporal dementia, uh, acronym is FTD, um, and I've been diagnosed that through uh, gene testing done by Frontier. I also arranged to have a second opinion to Gosford Hospital, and um, big ticket item like that I wanted to be doubly sure. Um, and. That was 2014, and that was the, year, the same year that my sister had died from this illness. Uh, my brother got diagnosed with the same illness as my sister, and it turned out to be frontotemporal dementia. And he's living in a nursing home now, and he's living well with dementia. Yeah. And I think I was in denial for a long time. I thought, well, just because she has the gene doesn't mean that she'll develop the full-blown illness. But no, I, I, I was probably the one that was more in denial and eventually I had to accept that. And, and little by little over the years since then, I've noticed functional changes in the, the way Wendy might behave or what she's able to do and not to do. And most people wouldn't even know from talking to her that there are areas in her life where there is some impairment. Mum told us she was diagnosed actually when we were in David Jones Cafe. So it was a bit of a shock. Um, obviously a public place having to process the information. Um, my sister and I went away, spoke about it because I was living with her at the time. and. We were like, it doesn't change who mum is. You know, we'll just adapt to her as she gets worse along the way. Fix me currently, um, I can't work full time. I mean, I could still work, but there's still stigma around dementia. So if they knew about my condition, they didn't may not want to employ me. My job before this was the driving instructor, so I definitely can't do that one. But I'm still driving um, through an annual driving test. One of the earliest signs for me is the phone would ring and I'd hang up on the person, especially the home phone, or my mobile would ring and he's telling me, your phone's ringing, and it's like, and if I'm doing something here, that's like an interruption. Yeah, so definitely the communication with the telephone. We, we've named Wendy's illness Dorothy, and what we've tried to do is put the illness at arm's length from Wendy. So it's not Wendy that's doing those things that really annoy me, it's Dorothy. And, and we've done that for quite a while, and sometimes Wendy will look at me and say, was that Dorothy? And I'll say, yes, I think so. Frontotemporal dementia affects the executive functions more than anything else, which is things like planning, organisation, judgement. Occasionally, um, Wendy's filters don't work and she'll say something that... Um, it's not so much that she doesn't really mean it, but we all have those thoughts that we think that's better left unsaid and we don't say it. But in Wendy's case, it just tends to come out sometimes. And, uh, and that's what we call Dorothy, you know, when she says those things. And um, I don't always react well to it. And I find it difficult at times to be a carer because I can become very frustrated, I can become very upset, and I have to remember it's Dorothy, it's not Wendy. The Wendy I know and love is a beautiful human being, highly principled, um, with a great sense of ethics and values, committed to people and committed to doing what she can to make this a better world for all of us. And she's always been like that. That's what, what I saw when I met her and that's why I married her.
just going over to Sharon's house and seeing Edward. And um, he loves me, you know, and I love him and he just, and I might just stay there 10 minutes and then I might come back. And um, I think that's been, I think that's been the joy. So it's been actually really helpful having mum right there because it's strengthened our bond and I think our son has helped mum plateau in her illness as well. And Edward will say, uh, play, mum will play and we play and that's, that's fun. I gave a letter to both my daughters given to us by the geneticist to saying that a family member is being diagnosed with this illness and you have a 50% chance of inheriting the illness. My sister and I made the decision to do the genetic testing as well and we were thankful, blessed I guess, that we were negative so it meant that the gene stopped at mum and it didn't pass down to us talk about a joyous occasion when we got the result because I knew then that Sharon, my youngest daughter, would start to um, plans to have a family, which, which has happened. Which has happened. We have a two and a half year old grandson and a 11 day old granddaughter now. Yeah, so. Um, but that process was really, that was quite traumatic, sitting on the sidelines waiting for their results to come through. Champagne flowed that day. I go, was going to the gym, I go, I go walking, I go to golf, doing creative things and, and I don't know what's going to give me longevity but I think all of that might and so I don't want to be stereotypically um, you've got dementia, you're a no cat, you've got no hope but I think having the information early is giving me hope to hold on to what I've got for as long as I've got it. Yeah, so the, the catch cry I use is, I've seen signs on backs, backs of cars saying adventure before dementia and mine's adventure with dementia. Mm.